an example of a gyrator circuit with op amps and transformer. Um, in this circuit, we have two ports as shown. Here is the second port with voltage V2 and current I2 flowing to the port, and here is the port 1 with voltage V1 and current I1. Um, there is this load attached to port V2, which is basically a capacitor with just the ideal transformer 1 to N ratio. We want to find the input impedance or feminine impedance uh, equivalently set uh, as seen from port 1. So that's the question, and also a follow-up question is find the admittance uh, matrix for this two port. Okay, so current I2 is flowing into this port. That current goes uh, this way. Assuming ideal op amps for the two op amps shown here, and assuming um, uh, the negative feedback is in place and op amps are not saturated, because of the properties of ideal op amp, the voltage uh, for the positive terminal should be equal to the voltage at the negative terminal. So if the voltage here is V2, which is exactly the voltage here, then here the voltage has to be V2. And um, uh, as a result, since these two nodes have the same potential and this is also connected, so the uh, current going through these two resistors should be the same. As a result of that, uh, if I2 is flowing this way, an I2 current should also flow, uh, should flow this way. And of course, the sum of these two I2 would flow back to the output of um, the second op amp. So given the voltage V2 here and a current I2 flowing this way, of course, it would result in a voltage drop across this resistor equal to R times I2. As a result, the voltage here, which we refer to as V of X, um, V of X obviously has to be equal to V2 plus the voltage drop here. So V of X is just simply V2 plus Ri2. Okay, um, now since we're assuming that this op amp is not saturated at, as well and this ideal op amp is in full operation with negative feedback, then the voltage on positive and negative terminals should be the same. So if here is Vx, here should be Vx as well. So voltage here is Vx. Therefore, current flowing um, through this resistor um, should, so here is the current I2 flowing. And we're saying current flowing through this resistor, uh, which let's show with Ix, or um, let's say Ix, should be equal to Vx over R. And knowing uh, Vx is uh, this current, so it is V2 plus Ri2 over R. So it is simply V2 over R plus I2. Same argument as the op amp number one. If the current V Ix is flowing this way, and since there is no current can't flow into the ideal terminals of an ideal op amp because of infinite impedance at input of the ideal op amp, then this current I of X, Ix should flow this way. Um, and similarly, because the voltage uh, at the two ends of these two resistors are the same, the current flowing through them should be the same. So current I of X or Ix flows this way. There should be a current Ix flowing that way. So that current Ix flows this way. Um, and let's uh, keep in mind, Ix is I2 plus V2 over R. So since I2 out of Ix is flowing this way, as a result, the current V2 over R component flows toward uh, the first port. Um, therefore, from these outcomes, we can see that I1 is simply minus V2 over R. OK. Now, at the same time, what we have is uh, V1. is simply Vx minus um, V2 over R times R. So V1, which is the voltage at this terminal, is simply Vx minus voltage drop across this resistor. So it is Vx minus the current flowing through this resistor V2 over R times R. 
so it is simply Vx minus V2. And Vx is the one that we found here, so it is uh, V2 plus Ri2 minus V2. So uh, V1 is simply R times I2. Very interesting. So effectively with these two outcomes we found, we can say uh, there is this relationship between the uh, current vector for these two ports, I1, I2. So I1 is only related to V2 divided by minus R. So if V1, V2, I1 does not have any dependency of V1, and it's only dependent on V2 minus 1 over R. And I2 does not have any dependency on V1. Um, sorry, I2 has, does not have any dependency on V2, so it's only dependent on V1, and it is um, 1 over R. So we just found uh, the admittance matrix um, of this two port, and this is classic gyrator with gyration coefficients of 1 over R. Um, so we found the admittance matrix, and this is definitely admittance a matrix of a gyrator. It means this two port enclosed here in this box is just a gyrator. To find the input impedance or thevenin impedance as seen from port 1, we just uh, start with uh, the definition of the input impedance, Zn. And um, so Zn or Z, as, as seen from port 1, is V1 over I1. And uh, uh, we just use the result from equation 1 and 2 to substitute for these two um, V1 and I1, so V1 from equation 2 is Ri2, so it's R times I2, and I1 from equation 1 is just minus V2 over R. So it's uh, minus R square I2 over V2, and I2, uh, V2 are the current and voltages as shown for the second port of this ideal transformer uh, which is a 1 to n ratio transformer. There are n times more turns uh, in the second port uh, compared to the first port. Now, this ideal transformer, uh, on the first, uh, in the first port, it only has one passive device, which is a capacitor. Therefore, from, the, uh, from what is seen from the second port, it is just a passive device. There is no active device here, so there is no voltage generation, there is no current generation. Because of that, uh, there is no way we can have this sort of a V2 voltage drop when the current I2 is shown like this, unless the relationship between current and voltage uh, corresponding to IC and VC is negative, meaning that if we have this V2 and I2, uh, the only conclusion is it has to be minus R2 minus uh, IC divided by N as defined by the relationship between the currents of the two ports of an ideal transformer with turn ratio 1 to N. And uh, the voltage V2 is N times VC. So, um, I would like to draw your attention to this negative sign here, which this negative sign and this one, they just cancel out each other, and we have R2 divided by N square, R square divided by N square, IC over VC. And IC over VC is just the admittance of this capacitor, which in S domain representation is just simply uh, CS. So interesting thing is, uh, the input impedance or Thevenin impedance as seen from port 1 is now proportional to CS, while the impedance of this capacitor is 1 over CS. So effectively, we, uh, um, with this gyrator circuit, using this gyrator circuit, we made the impedance in inverter uh, or reciprocator. Um, so that's an interesting property, meaning that using a capacitor, we actually ended up uh, feeling or sensing an inductive effect looking from port 1 as, as shown here. So you can think of this as an inductive value with the inductance of 
L equal to R square C divided by N square. So you can think of this circuit as a convert as a capacitor to inductor converter.